Hello everyone, this is Shadowman, and I've got some time to build a small mechanism right now, and this is just the start of it. I'm not really even sure what this is going to be called yet, but you'll see what it is in the video title. Probably something like a motor equalizer, something like that. So what am I trying to do here? In my previous build series, the Kinex Robot, I, would, I was having problems with these motors being different speeds, even though they're the same type of motor. And that is really to be expected of any DC motor. I just kind of realized it in those episodes. I think it was episode 6 or 7. Um, I'm not going to go into detail because you can just go back and watch it if you want. So I'm trying to make a way for these two motors to stay the same speed, even though they are different speeds. So how am I going to do that? Let's just say that this motor is going slightly faster than this motor. So to keep them at the same speed, we can just turn the output of this motor off for some time and then turn it back on. And that's what I've got going with this differential here. And for now I can just ignore this wheel up here, just ignore that whole top section. I'll explain that later. But this differential allows this output to be turned on and off without using a traditional type of transmission. And I'll just show that real quick like this. Right now the output is going the same speed as the input. That's with keeping the differential still. However, if I let it go, then we can see that the output will stay still if it has enough friction on it. So instead of the output going, now it's the differential that spins around. So just by locking this gear, or letting it go like that, we can manipulate this output to be either rotating or not rotating. And right now it just kind of looks weird just because of the weight of it. I should really do something like this. So now we can see that locking it down makes it rotate and releasing it will make the output stay still. So now we've got a way for if that output is going too fast compared to the other motor we could just unlock this differential for some time like that and then lock it back in position and that will cause this shaft to, to um, slow down and hook up with that shaft even though we aren't really changing the speeds we're just kind of disengaging it for a while the one issue with doing that is one of the outputs to the motor will look really choppy with when it turns on and off really suddenly and that's what it, I'm doing with this wheel back here. I've actually was trying lots of different methods for doing this like having a brake system right here and I will show different videos of that um, on the screen right now. The main problem with these is that braking on those wheels really didn't help as much as I thought it would. I thought it would make the differential kind of spin down slower or go a slower speed rather than just locking or unlocking and you can see from the video clips that the output really only either goes on the differential side or the regular output side and it's still pretty choppy looking. So to cause a more smooth ramp up time I decided to add this flywheel right here and this hooks up to the gear on the differential with this and I'll just attach this real quick. Here is when everything is locked down and the output is going at the same speed. However, when it needs to slow down to let the other motor catch up with it, we can just unlock this gear right here. And you can see that the differential had a slow startup unlike all the other systems. And because the differential started up slower, that makes this had a lot smoother transition between being on and off. 
And that's all because of this flywheel. It has to gain momentum when it starts, but once it starts spinning, it just stays that way. What I'm going to do now is make kind of a brake system similar to what I had before to go onto the flywheel itself. And the goal here will be not so much making it go slower, but just to stop it and allow it to do the opposite of what it does when it spins up. So instead of stopping it immediately and getting a jerky output right here, it will stop it gradually. And you'll see more of that when I actually get a video of it. Here it is with a simple brake installed for the flywheel, and there's where it makes contact. Now you might be wondering, if a brake didn't work on those other versions that I showed, then why am I doing a brake right here and expecting that to work? Well, it's a lot different when the brake is used with a flywheel, because the goal isn't to change the speed of this and make it decrease, the goal is just to stop it smoothly. So I'll start it up and show how it works. Right now it's completely locked, and even if I apply a lot of torque here, it still stays there. So if you just release this a little bit, it starts to spin up like that. And then if I release it, um, if I release the brakes slowly, then it's a more gradual stop for the differential. And you can see on the output, it will go slower slightly and then back up to regular speed. Now the brake is a lot more sudden than it is when it's when the flywheel spins up, as you can probably tell. It's a very slight adjustment going down, but I think that'll be good enough for these purposes. One thing to note about this system right here is that the more torque that the output has to turn, the quicker that flywheel will speed up. And so it won't always be a constant speed right here, and I'll demonstrate that right here with the brake disabled. So with only that piece there connected, you can see it spin up right here. And if I really apply more torque to the output like this, and you can see that it's spun up a lot quicker. So this system isn't really designed for high torque applications, so I would have to do some more design changes and make it more complex for that, and I might do that in a later uh, model, but for now I think I will just focus on making this lower torque version. So now that I've gotten this part pretty much finished, I need to make another one of these for this motor, so they'll each have their own um, differential. Then I will need to compare the two outputs with another differential in the middle, and that will be what controls which one of these brakes gets released and for how long, and that'll be easier to explain when I actually have something made. I have mirrored this side to add the other motor and differential, and I've also connected both of the outputs to a third differential and this is going to be what compares the two shaft uh, speeds. If both the speeds move at the exact um, same rate then this differential will be still but if one of them, if one of the motors is slightly faster then it will turn really slowly and I'm going to use that to run a loop of chain and that'll be what lifts up these brakes right here and hopefully that will correctly adjust the shaft speeds. I guess I could hook these motors up right now just to see, uh, just to demonstrate this.
we can see that this isn't still, so I need to reverse one of these motors. I was hoping they would just happen to be the, the correct direction, but they aren't. Let's try this again with the motor in the opposite direction. Okay, this plug's not staying in this motor. I don't know what's wrong with that. So the differential, as you can see, is spinning slightly in that direction. So we already know these motors are not the same speed. And that will especially be apparent if I add torque to one of the sides. So now it's spinning in the other direction. Everything is hooked up right now, even though it's all on the bottom, so I'll flip it upside down in a minute. But when I rotate this differential one way, you can see one of the flywheels goes off. And when I do it in the other direction, the other one goes off. And right now I've kind of got stuck in the middle of there just because of how it's made, but it doesn't do that when it's actually running. You can see it there. And I'll f uh, flip it upside down. So it's just this loop of chain attached here, and this is the part that slides back and forth. And it lifts either one brake up or the other, like that. There's the other side. And if it's directly in the middle, both the brakes are down. So it's pretty interesting if I just turn one of the motors on. So let's see what happens when I do that. Or it just won't work. So when only one motor is going, both of the shafts are stopped, just because this one over here is stopped. And it just kind of freezes in this position. And if I turn this motor off, everything will reset back to the middle. With both motors running, it's kind of hard to tell if anything's happening just because the speeds are only slightly different. Now let's see what happens if we put more torque on one side. So you can see the flywheel over here is starting to go, starting to be braked and unbraked. And the middle keeps on going to that side. So because of that, this motor over here, or the shaft over here is being forced to turn slower just because this one over here is being made to turn slower, and you can see that with the differential spinning. And then when I release the other shaft, they start spinning like they were before. To demonstrate this better, I've extended these output shafts and put a piece on the end of them, so we can tell if they are lined up or not. And the cool thing about this system is it works even if the motors aren't turned on at the same time. Which is convenient because I do not have a power strip. So I guess I can apply torque to one of these just to see the other one go. And now we can turn it off and see if the shafts are in the same position. Yeah, pretty much. There's just going to be some play between these shafts just because the rods aren't very rigid.
And that was a view from uh, the bottom showing the, the part in the middle that slides back and forth. I really like how this turned out. It's actually a lot simpler than I thought it would have to be. And like I said earlier, if you were to make these have a higher torque capability, then you'd have to do some modifications, but I'll wait to do that in the future. I only had about five days to build this, so I'm glad I was able to get it finished. It's cool because this middle section that slides and releases these brakes is kind of like a really basic mechanical PID controller. And if you don't know what that is, there are several YouTube videos you can look up that will explain that. But I like how this thing has turned out. Now, what are some of the uses of this in the future? Like I was mentioning at the beginning, on my last project with the robot, I was having lots of problems with having to keep things in sync, and so this could be used with that, keeping two shafts in sync. I also think it would be really cool to have one motor that just runs normally, and then you could have maybe four motors, all with these systems hooked up to it, and all four of those motors could um, go at the same speed as the main motor. This could also be used if you have a huge ball machine and say one of the motors isn't running for whatever reason and it could be used as an indicator to let you know that that motor is off. Of course that would only really be useful if it is hard to see or something. I hope you enjoyed this short episode of me building the shaft synchronizer. That's probably what I'll end up calling it. I'm sure there are many other possible uses for these systems. I haven't really thought of them right now, but in the future, um, I might. And for any of you wondering, what happened to the robot project? Because I said I was going to make a final video. Well, I tried recording that, and I couldn't really get it to be accurate enough. And I recorded a couple clips, and I'll put those up right now. I really wasn't able to make the robot arm pick up the object and... Um, place it anywhere like I wanted it to, and I probably could have kept on filming it and tweaking it, but I was really running out of time because I moved out very shortly after that, so I had to quickly take it apart because I didn't want it put together and sitting around for many months. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.